What's up, guys? We are back with another one, Pitch Meeting. I couldn't wait for this one. The whole time I was watching Wonder Woman 1984, I was like, I cannot wait for the pitch meeting to this movie. I cannot wait. There were so many plot holes. And there's so many little things that didn't make sense in this movie. I know some people enjoyed this movie. I know there's some people out there that enjoyed it, that had a good time. Good for you guys. You know, but... This movie had a lot of problems. Yeah. So let's check this out. I can't wait to see what Ryan George, Pitch Meeting, has to say about this movie. Let's go. I feel the same way. Oh, God. Spoilers ahead. Lots of spoilers. So you have a Wonder Woman sequel for me? Yes, sir, I do. So we're going to start the movie with Diana as a kid back in Themyscira. Okay, okay, and what's she up to? Well, she's competing in the Amazon version of that TV show Wipeout, and she tries to use a shortcut to win and learns that cheating is wrong. Sure, okay, that's a nice quick message to start the movie off. It's going to take a full 11 minutes. Oh, my God. Oh. So then we're going to jump forward to the 1980s, which is when this movie takes place. Okay, okay, so like 30, 40 years ago. Oh, I don't enjoy that that's a true thing. So anyway, Diana's still super heartbroken about Steve Trevor dying mm -hmm. in the first movie. He's all she can think about. Really? After all that time? Yeah, well, I mean, you gotta a understand, this was a really good guy she knew for a couple of days seven decades ago. Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So anyway, Diana's working in Washington, D.C. at the Smithsonian, and she has a new co-worker <laughs> named Barbara. And what's her deal? Oh, well, she's a freaking nerd, sir. She can't even <laughs> walk in heels. Oh, embarrassing, <laughs> disgusting, and pathetic. I bet nobody likes her. Yeah, and so there's this artifact <laughs> called the Dreamstone, and that's what this movie's gonna focus on. Oh, what's this thing do. Oh, this thing's freaking nuts. It grants wishes, but it takes something nuts. in return. A very magical stone. Yeah, and this phony business <laughs> guy, Max Lord, stone. he gets his hand on it, and he wishes to become the dream stone. Oh, so he turns to stone? Yeah, you would think so, the way that was phrased, but no, now he can grant people's <laughs> wishes when they touch him, and he can right. take something in return. Right. Uh, do Barbara and Diana get wishes in before he does that? They do. Barbara wishes to be more like Diana, so she gets some nice clothes and some super <laughs> strength, and now she can walk in heels. Now that's impressive, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, she's not pathetic no. anymore. Also, she removes she's her glasses, pathetic. which, as you know, makes people automatically more attractive. That's just good character <laughs> development is what that is. And so Diana's gonna wish for Steve Trevor to come back to life, and this way we could get Chris Pine back in the movie. Oh, people like Chris Pine, so what, does he just appear out of thin air? Actually, no, his consciousness goes into this random guy's body, so everybody sees this random guy, but we see Chris Pine. So, okay, uh, is this because the stone can't make things just magically show up? No, it absolutely can. A giant wall's gonna appear out of nowhere, so are some new I mean, the thing is magic. So why are we doing this weird body control thing with Steve? I don't sense. know. What happens to this guy's <laughs> consciousness while Steve's controlling his body? Who's to say? You are. Yeah. What if this guy has a job and a family he has to get to? Oh, God, the implications are insane. Where is his consciousness? Is he Where dead? Is... Oh, well, here's the thing, sir. I'm going to need <laughs> you to get dead? all the way off my back about this body control thing. All get off of it. Oh, that back. felt vaguely threatening, so I'm going to get off your back about that. <laughs> Good. And so then Steve and <laughs> Diana, obviously, they get intimate because, you know, they love each other. They do that using a strange body. That's got, that's got to be crossing a line. That's not okay. Yeah, well, we're going to have them do it anyway, and I find it strange that you immediately got back on my back about that. I mean, it's actually a really easy fix. Just have Steve Trevor show up as himself. No. Ah. So then that Max no. Lord guy makes no. himself super rich, and he goes to Egypt to take some guy's oil and make himself even richer. Okay. So Steve and Diana, they got to get over there, you know? How are they going to do that? Well, the thing is, they can't just take a commercial flight, because Steve doesn't have a passport. Well, I mean, the guy he's possessing probably has one. Well, they don't check for that. That. They get to the Smithsonian and steal one of the jets from over there. They have operational jets at the museum? They do, yeah. Fully fueled jets just lying sense. around, so they take one of those, because Steve is a pilot. Right, okay, he was a pilot in World War I. These are, that, that, those are different planes. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, a plane is a plane. That's, I mean, okay, yeah, that sentence is not technically wrong. So there uh -huh. you go. No, but, okay, but... Sir, a plane is a plane. Are you implying that a plane's not a plane? Because a plane is a plane. I'm not, I mean, that's just such a vague <laughs> general statement. A plane thing. is a plane. Okay. So then they're being chased because of the jet. Sense. Sense. And so Wonder Woman goes ahead and makes it invisible, and that's how she uh, gets her invisible jet. Scene. What? How? Well, it turns out that's a thing she can do, so she does the thing that she can do. Wow, well, well, thank God she has that ability we never once mentioned a reference. Yeah, it works out great, so they go to Egypt, and they have a big chase scene with Max Lord. Oh, very exciting. But he freaking gets away, and he goes around causing a bunch more chaos. Then he goes to see the President of the United States. What for? Well, he gets the President to wish for more nukes, and then he sees this technology just lying around in the Oval Office 
office, and it's exactly what he needs. What do you mean? Well, it's this device that lets him take over everybody's screen around the world. So technically, through like satellite waves, he is, you know, he's touching them. How? Oh, don't worry about it. Oh, okay. I won't. <laughs> so then don't there's going to be this fight in the White House, and Barbara, she's turning evil, so she gets in on that too. Okay. And Steve <laughs> manages to grab Max Lord. Oh, and so he wishes for everything to go back to normal. Oh yeah, no, that would have been smart. Instead, he pushes him around a bit. <laughs> also a decent strategy. Yeah. So then Max Lord escapes, and he heads off to the satellite island to do his broadcast. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. And wow, Steve wow. and Diana find out that everybody needs to renounce their wishes or else civilization's gonna end. So they have this big emotional oh, goodbye. Oh, very sad. Very sad. Very. But then she starts to fly and lasso some lightning bolts, so that's pretty cool. That's not, that's not bad. Oh, sure, yeah, that may as well happen. So then Diana's gonna have to fight Barbara, who, by the way, is a cat now. What? Yeah, she's a cat now. She's part cheetah. What are you talking about? By I see Max way. Lord was like, hey, anything else you want? And she's like, yes, actually, I would like to be an apex predator, please. Oh, so she could have just as easily been turned into a killer whale. Yeah, I guess there was a chance she could have turned into a, you know, orca whale, but that would have made for a less interesting fight scene. Oh, I wholeheartedly disagree. Anyway, so then we're gonna have a barely <laughs> visible fight scene, and Barbara's gonna a get electrocuted. Yeah. yeah. So she dies. Well, no, she gets a little sleepy, which is what happens when cats get electrocuted. That's not, I, no, I don't sleep. think that's accurate. Well, that's what my dad told me when my childhood cat <laughs> chewed through his extension cord. That, that your cat died, I think. No, sir, he went to sleep, then he went to live on a farm, and I never saw him again. I mean, okay, so what happens next? Oh, well, Max is granting wishes to everybody in the world through their screens. Most of the world doesn't speak English. Well, okay, yeah, I'll keep that in mind for trivia night, I guess. That's interesting. Anyway, it's gonna be complete chaos. Oh, it is? Yeah, people are killing each other with wishes. One guy gets a farm outside his apartment. People can wish for anything. Really? Yeah, it's gonna be nuts. Statistically speaking, wouldn't nuts. at least one person wish for the guy that just showed up on their TV to die or, or for the world to end? Uh, wouldn't true. at least one person true. wish for world peace? What happens with that paradox? Well, I mean, that's, kind of, that's like a one in a million kind of wish, right? There are billions of people in the world. Oh, you're just full of fun trivia tonight. So anyway, Diana has <laughs> to lasso full. this guy, but her lasso can't get through this mysterious wind around him. Oh, wow. It's gonna be tough for her to defeat him if she can't reach him. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely Very an inconvenience. inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, she gets her lasso around his ankle, and then she can talk to everybody through him. I thought she couldn't get through with that thing. Oh, yeah, no, she couldn't, but then... She could. But how? Unclear. Well, okay then. So then she tells everybody to renounce their wishes because nothing good comes from lying. And everybody does it. Everybody does it, including Max Lord, who suddenly cares about his son that he's been actively ignoring the whole movie. Uh -huh. And so what about, like, what if someone with a terminal illness wished to be cured? Oh, uh, well, uh, they, would have, they would have to renounce that because that's, mm. that's not the truth. Uh, what if a blind person wished to be able to see? <laughs> that's, uh, the, that's, that's a shortcut <laughs> oh uh, to being able I'm to so see, right. so that's... That's wrong. What if somebody wished to be able to feed their starving child? Oh, okay, this moment only works if everybody wishes for something selfish or violent, so we're gonna have to pretend like that's the case, okay? No, pretending is tight. Okay, let's do it. Right. Okay, thank God. So then Max Lord is gonna go reunite with his son, who just kinda comes running out of the woods for no reason. How did Max Lord get back from the island if he renounced all his wishes? Unclear. And what happens with Barbara? Oh, well, she's not a cat anymore, and she's she's chilling, I imagine. Okay. Anyway, then Diana's gonna have a little flirty moment with the guy who Steve was controlling. It's gonna be very sweet. He's already seen that guy naked. Yeah, just a real sweet moment. It's gonna be Christmas, too. Yeah, I don't know if it being Christmas makes it better. And then she looks at a balloon, and we're all done. So what do you think? I mean, I feel good. like using a strange man's body is just so deeply strange and raises so many messed up questions. Yeah. Right, right, right. Well, maybe nobody will think of how weird it is. Well, yeah, I guess that is a possibility. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> More than one minute. You know, some people always see the return. return. Yeah, that is problematic. You know, <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of questions, a lot of implications there. This was hilarious. Oh my god! And I knew this one was gonna be good. I'm of telling course. you, this guy Ryan George, he is amazing. He's so funny. He's he's amazing. Like amazing. what he does. Amazing. I wonder if he writes it himself. I'm not sure, but this had to be one of my favorites. Because yeah, one of my pet peeves in a movie is like if things just don't make sense. Exactly. And there were so many things in Wonder Woman that, that just did not make, make sense. sense. Like defied logic. There was like no logic in a lot of these things. You just know? the way that everything came together in this movie is just ah. Uh... It's yeah. so disappointing. Like, now that I see this, I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, this movie was not good, which is so upsetting. And I guarantee you, he had a hard time keeping this to eight minutes because he could have kept going. Oh, yeah. He could have kept going I mean, for, like, 15 even, minutes. He didn't even talk about, like, how chick flick this movie was, oh, how, like, God. slow pace was at the beginning. Like, a whole hour and a half of just how she, right. like, 
stupid stuff that didn't make sense, you know, and how she right. felt about the love. Oh my god. The whole first hour was a chick flick. But one of my favorites, it's like they break into the Smithsonian to steal a, a plane, and these planes never work in museums. And it was fully fueled for a flight from here to the Middle East. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? Who wrote and this? Then, Who then, wrote this? And then the guy like don't know how to fly this this, this plane. Like this, he's, right. You know. Like he's never seen this plane from this era. Yeah, like he used to do like World War whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> You know, another thing that bothered me that he didn't mention in the movie is like in the movie, he sees a, a train and it's like he's seeing a train for the first time. It's like, no, they had trains back then. <laughs> it's not like he came from the Stone Ages. They had trains <laughs> in World War II. I think that whole thing of him coming back to, to 1984 from the way, way, way back past, like it just it was just overly done, like overly like his reaction was a truthful, like the yeah. way he dressed. Like, it was just, like, not okay. Like, it was yeah. not good. I, I had a lot of problems with this movie, but I know some people enjoyed it, so I'm not going to trash it too much. You know, I don't want to kill it for a lot of people. I, You know, I understand a lot of people did enjoy this movie. You know, they found it entertaining. Hey, I mean, if you found it entertaining. I mean, I'm not going to lie. There is parts there is that was parts. entertaining, mostly at the mm -hmm. end. Um, But, uh, you know. But personally, me, when it comes to movies, if things don't add up, it bothers me. Like, it takes me out of the movie. Yeah. But anyway, this was hilarious. Thanks for watching. Uh, let us know if you want to see more of these videos. Leave us a comment. What was your favorite part of this pitch meeting? Pitch meeting. What did you say was tight in this one? I already forgot. I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> Flying? But this one was no. tight. <laughs> this pitch meeting was tight. I love when he was like, you're going to have to get all the way like all, all the way off my back. Way off my back. <laughs> and then he went right. He's like, you just went right on my back. <laughs> Get off my back again. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye.